Welcome back guys. Here's how to connect a uh, FreeSky X8R receiver to a NACE32 flight controller. I'll show you how to wire everything to get your channels and also telemetry, take you into beta flight, show you how to configure everything there, then we will go into the Tyrannus to set up the telemetry. So first let's look at the NACE32. This row of pins here will be your input pins. If you look on the back side, you'll see uh, G and D, which is ground, then 5V, that's going to be your power source to power the receiver. Uh, then you have channels 1 to 8. Now, uh, normally channels 1 to 8 is for PWM receivers, but uh, you can also configure these channels to do other things. So if we flip around to the back again, we'll see on channel number 3, it says U2TX, which is UART number 2, transmit. Channel number 4 is also U2RX, which is UART number 2, receive. The X8R is a PWM receiver, meaning that you will have one signal wire for each and every one of these 8 channels, plus you will also have one uh, power wire and one ground wire, meaning a minimum of 10 wires for only eight channels. The other thing the XCR is capable of is SBUS. SBUS means that we will actually get 16 channels and we will only use three wires because 16 of those channels are only going through one signal wire. I just soldered on a three wire servo cable like this. Uh, you don't have to, you can use the pins and uh, like the pin headers if you want. It's gonna be the same thing. So going by this diagram, and this diagram is actually for these pins down here, uh, there's three pins by themselves. So we will just take this and plug it in in the same order going by that diagram with signal being towards the inside, ground being, <coughs> I'm hitting puberty, ground being towards the uh, outside. Now let's talk about telemetry. Uh, this receiver also uses smart port telemetry and normally smart port telemetry would go to another UART port, but because this NACE32 is, uh, it's, it has an F1 processor, it's very outdated, uh, and it only has two UARTs. We do also have UART number one over here, but it's tied into the USB, so I don't like using that, and the only thing I ever use that for would be like an on-screen display. So instead, we will also configure uh, some channels to be a soft serial port. Soft serial number one is on channels five and six. Soft serial number two is on channels seven and eight. Uh, we will be using soft serial number two. But smart port telemetry actually sends and receives where uh, channel number eight set up as a soft serial is actually going to be a uh, receive 7 is the transmit, but we need both of those going to one wire. So the simple fix for that, what I've done here is actually just take my wire and solder it to both 7 and 8. If you only solder this to one or the other, it's not going to work. Then on the back side of the X8R receiver, you'll see another diagram like this uh, with a S this time, and S is going to be your smart port wire. We don't need another power and ground because we already have one power and ground here. Uh, and like I said, that's all you need. So I will just plug in the smart port wire to the S right there. Uh, like I said, the two other pins we are not going to use. And now everything is wired up, except for if we plug in a USB cable, this will power the flight controller. And on most flight controllers, it powers the flight controller and receiver both, but not on the NAS32. Like I said, it's outdated. Uh, so we do need to provide power to get our receiver powered. To do this, you can either, uh, if you use linear ESCs, then uh, having those ESCs on channels one to four, if you are using a quadcopter, uh, they have a built-in voltage regulator, a, a BEC, and that BEC will actually power uh, the flight controller and receiver. If you're like me and you don't use linear ESCs, you use opto ESCs, then you'll have to provide a separate 5-volt power source. To do that, I will just use this PDB that has a 5-volt voltage regulator built-in, and I've run these wires to output channel number 6. 
Uh, the reason I'm using number six is because, uh, like I said, your ESCs are going to take up one to four, leaving five and six left over. Uh, so that's a great way to power it. So now if I plug in my LiPo battery, we are now getting power to the receiver. At this time, you, uh, if you have not yet, you need to bind the receiver. Uh, I'll be leaving links in the description below or in the top right of your screen uh, to my X8R playlist, Naze32 playlist, and also my Tyrannus series playlist. In the X8R playlist, you'll find a video where I show you how to bind it and also change firmware should you need to. Now if I turn on my transmitter. Hey JC, welcome back. Cheat mode active. Wait for it. Okay, so now uh, with the receiver. Low battery, battery critical. Damn it, every time. I have the receiver already bound. When you turn on the transmitter, I'm now getting the solid green light, which means you are good to go. So like I said, check out those other videos and uh, bind it, and then hopefully you will be caught up. So now we will just connect to Betaflight. First let's go to the Ports tab, and because we have the signal wire on UART number 2, under UART number 2, we will go to uh, here and turn on Serial RX, Save and Reboot. Now go to Configuration, scroll down, and uh, because we're using SBUS, we need to select RX serial, choose which type of serial receiver, which is SBUS, scroll down some more, turn on soft serial so we can get the telemetry working, and also turn on telemetry. Then save and reboot. Now go back to ports, and because we put that telemetry wire on soft serial number two, you will come over here and select smart port. I know there is an option for FreeSky and this is a FreeSky receiver, but FreeSky telemetry is different from smart port telemetry. Uh, so you have to use smart port. Save and reboot. Go back to configuration and make sure that it's still saved for RX serial because sometimes it doesn't save and it sets it back to PPM. Also make sure you're still set to SBUS. Uh, if you did have to make a change, make sure you save and reboot again. Now let's just go to receiver and test everything. So if I move my joysticks around, we see roll, pitch, yaw, and throttle all moving. If you have created any switches, you can go ahead and test those out now. Things are about to get real. Hybrid mode. Stunt mode active. Cheat mode active. Okay, we're good. Now let's talk about telemetry. So now we want to press the menu button to go to our models, hold down the page button to go backwards a page to telemetry, scroll down to discover new sensors, and press enter. And here is all of our telemetry. If you're seeing all of these sensors, then you are now done. If you're only seeing four sensors, then keep watching. I'm going to uh, explain what's happening and try to fix it. Uh, so if you are only seeing four sensors, this means you are telemetry telemetry is not working. Uh, you actually get telemetry from two different places. One place is your receiver, the other place is your flight controller. Uh, those four sensors you will always get from your receiver uh, because as long as your receiver is receiving power, uh, even if your telemetry wire is not connected to anything at all, you will always get those four sensors. So the first thing I would check is uh, go to your CLI tab. Really this will mostly apply to uh, the clean flight users uh, because Betaflight already sets this for you but uh, either way you just want to type in set telemetry and then enter. Under telemetry inversion make sure that it's turned on. If it is turned well if it's turned on just leave it there. If it's turned off uh, then just do this. Type set space telemetry underscore inversion space equals space on press enter you should now have a message that says this if you typed it in exactly right but if you misspelled any letters or left any spaces out then you will get unknown command uh, but once you get this message then you can type in save and enter 
Now I'll go back to the Tyrannus and rediscover new sensors again. Um, at that point, you should now be seeing more than those four sensors. If you are not, then uh, you just need to recheck everything. So go back to ports, make sure you have Serial RX selected for UART 2 and none other one. And then for Soft Serial 2, make sure you have Smart Port selected uh, and make sure it's not turned on for Soft Serial number 1. Also, uh, just make sure that this is still on RX Serial, S Bus, and both of these are turned on. Also, uh, if it's still not working, recheck all of your wiring. Uh, it should look exactly like this, uh, like I described throughout the video. That's going to do it for this one, guys. Uh, check out those other playlists for other helpful videos, and I will see you again soon.